Close your eyes and watch your breath. When the breath comes in, know it's coming in. When it goes out, know that it's going out. And then again, when it comes in again, goes out again, just stay with the breath. As for any other thoughts you might want to think, just put them aside for right now. They may be hovering in your mind, but you don't have to pay them any attention. Pay attention to the breath. The thoughts don't destroy the breath. It's still coming in, still going out. And this is where you want to stay, because you need to train the mind. Because the mind needs to see into what it's doing in the present moment. And the only way you're going to see that is if you have something to keep it in the present. And keep it with a sense of well-being. Notice when the breath is comfortable or not. If the breath is not comfortable, you can change. It's one of the few bodily processes that you can exert some control over. So take advantage of that fact. Try to breathe in a way that feels really good right now, deep down inside. And that makes it a lot easier to stay in the present moment, to see what the mind is doing. For the time being, you don't have to worry about the mind. Worry more about the breath. If the mind wanders off, just bring it right back. You want to get established here. And so when you're really established, you can see what the mind is doing. Because as the Buddha said, the mind causes itself a lot of suffering. Today's the day we commemorate his first sermon, and one of the first topics he talked about in that first sermon was suffering. Now that may turn a lot of people off. I was reading recently about a conference up in Silicon Valley where all these Silicon millionaires were recommending to some Buddhist teachers that they take suffering off the table because nobody likes to come to the table when they're suffering. But the Buddha talked about suffering not because he was pessimistic, because, but because he had a cure. It's like a doctor. You go see the doctor, and the doctor asks, where does it hurt? The doctor's not being pessimistic. The doctor's doing his job, because he knows he has a cure for lots of different hurts. So he's willing to talk about them very openly. It's the same with the Buddha, talking about suffering. He says he has a way of putting an end to suffering. It involves developing a lot of good qualities of mind so you can comprehend the suffering. So we're developing those qualities right now. Mindfulness, alertness, persistence, patience. When you have these qualities of mind, then you can look into the suffering and not try to push it away. Because to comprehend it, you have to be able to watch it and not be afraid of it. So that's what we're doing right now, is putting the mind in a good position where it doesn't have to be afraid of pains in the body, painful emotions in the mind. Because you've got a place to stay where you can watch these things and not get sucked into them. That right there is an important step, and it's an important skill. And we're all going to suffer pain at some time in our lives. So it's good to get prepared so you have the skills you need, so you don't have to suffer from the pain. Pain is normal in the body, but it doesn't have to come into the mind. And as we're meditating, we're learning the skills we need so that we can comprehend the pain and go beyond it. It's probably one of the most important skills you can develop, so give it some time every day. And you'll see that your relationship to pain and pleasure really changes. In other words, you're not so hungry for pleasure and not so scared of pain because you've got a sense of well-being right here that you can tap into any time you want. That's one of the most important skills you can master.